Um, like you said, my name is Derek Crow. I am the political director at Brave New Foundation. I run the Rethink Afghanistan campaign. Um, and I want to start by asking the audience a question. How many of you know the word Gardez? Okay, a couple, right? How many of you know the word Sanguine? Okay, now, there's a reason. I'm going to tell you the stories of these places, but the fact that you don't know about these two massacres that happened in Afghanistan points out the deep problem we have with the media in our country, especially with the international reporting. I'll start with Gardez. Um, Gardez um, was the home of a man, uh, is the hometown of a man named Commander Daoud, who trained with US forces to become the local police commander um, in his town. Um, one night, he and his family were celebrating the birth of a new, a new baby boy into their family. and. After the music had died down and after the people had gone to sleep, one of the guests had wandered outside about in the wee hours of the morning. And a flashlight was shown in his face. And this town is on the edge of Taliban territory. And instantly, he thought, the Taliban are here to get us. So he runs back into the family complex, shouting, the Taliban are here. US Special Forces, um, with Afghan counterparts, appeared on the rooftop of this family compound. And as Commander Daoud, who trained with US troops, was running across the courtyard of that compound, was shot. When his brother realized that these were American forces and ran out of the building and said, don't shoot, we work for the government, he was shot. As he was shot, the three, preg the three women behind them, two of them who were pregnant, were also hit. Um, in the aftermath of that, sh of that shooting, two of the people bled to death while US Special Forces were refusing to allow people to go for help, for medical attention while they did their best to hide the evidence of what they had done once it became apparent to them who they had shot. And that included digging bullets out of the bodies of the people who were there, one of whom was still alive. The bullets were removed from the walls, and the story that was fed up the command chain was that the US Special Forces had stumbled across the executed bodies of women who were killed execution style by Taliban militants. Now, when an international reporter named Jerome Starkey began to report on this story, he was instantly smeared by NATO forces um, as an inaccurate reporter that did a smear campaign around Kabul to try to discredit him. Um, and it took people like Rethink Afghanistan and Democracy Now! and folks um, in the international media like Al Jazeera reporting on that smear campaign to save that journalist's job and reputation in Afghanistan, but also to get that story into the mainstream media. Um, and like you said, Almost no one in the room had heard the word Gardez. Um, but it was a massacre of one of our allies in Afghanistan that was then actively lied uh, about in the US media for weeks by NATO spokespeople um, in Afghanistan. To set this up, when the Sanguine and Gardez incidents were finally reported in the US media, the way that reporting generally worked was there would be a guy standing there on CNN at CNN headquarters with just a map of Afghanistan behind him, um, describing what was happening. And if there was any live footage, it was almost always Department of Defense generated B-roll of just troops walking. And they would say things like, well, the US forces admitted they accidentally killed these three women, um, and they've issued an apology. Now, compare that with the video I'm about to show you that was, uh, that was gotten out of the country by some of the people that Anita works with. در رابطه با واقعی لیل 22 بر 23 دلوی 1388 شب جمعه بود که برای ما ساعت دو بجه روز خبر داده شد از طرف مامایم و بچه های مامایم که از اون نواسه مامایم تولد شده بود شب شش بود نیشسته بودیم محفل خوشی بود شب شش نواسه مامایم ما بود ما در اونجا آرام نیشسته بودیم تا دوازده بجه شب هم من همراه امی همه فقط ساعت چار و بیست چار و نیم صبح بود که صدای فیر برد شد وقتی که ساعت 11 بجه شد که امی قوات های امریکایی که این خانه را محاصره کرده بودن در بالای بام ها بلند شده بودن و همه را به شهادت از بام زده بودن در اوجا در روی حولی به شهادت رسانده بودن یک وقتی است که ساعت 7 افتونیم 8 بجه صبح است که بچه مامایم 
محمد صابر آمد برای من گفت که که در داوود حاولی که داوود جا قماندان سه داوود که بچه ماما این بود گفت شهید شده ظاهر که سارنوال ولسوالی احمد آبا بود گفت شهید شده نامزات بچه ما بود که منصور بچه ما نامزاتش بود شهید شده بود دختر مامایم شهید شده بود خانم بچه مامایم شهید شده بود همچنان امین نواسه کاکایم و نواسه مامایم این دو تا زخمی شده بود و یکی دختر مامایم که عروس شده بود هر کدام از این اف ما عاملدار بود اردیش با فیض زدن کشتن نه تنها این تو جنایت را انجام دادن که دو خانم سه خانم کشتن بلکه دو تا طفل شده رحمشون زدن شهید کرد وقت مبرایم برای من میگه مگه نامزات بچه تو و کماندان صاحب داوود تا 15 دقیقه کم هفت صبح فردا که 4 نیم بجا زخمی شده زنده بود نسبت زای کردن خون زیاد که کسی دیگر اجازه نداد که بیره به شب خانه انتقال بدن جان به هم تا 15 دقیقه کم هفت صبح زنده بوده اسمی که شما فرمودین که اینا بعضی شایعات داشتن که مردم که به شهادت رسیده بود این قبل از این حمله یا قبل از قبل از اینکه یا بیاید نوشته کردن در تن قبل از اینکه ما بیایم ما اومدیم این دو خانم و این سه خانم و دو نفر کشته شده بود این خب به خاطر چی این به خاطر ازی که اونمو عمل علمناک ظالمانه ای را که انجام داده در برابر ذهنیت بین المللی او را بپوشانه لکن برعکس ما در اوجا ولی من هر دومند هستم که جامعه مدنی حقوق بشر سازمان ملل متحد به آ و فریاد ما برسه و این موضوع را پیگیری بکنه و بالاخره یک نتیجه را به دست ما بده But this this is what the Afghanistan war looks like um, told in the voice of people in Afghanistan in their own language um, with video that they took of their own of that that party video you see at the beginning of this clip is the night bef right before these men died. Um, and the man who's dancing at the beginning in the dark coat is Commander Dawood. Uh, there is no reporting like this in the mainstream media. Already two-thirds of the American people already opposed this war. If, and we're seeing a very sanitized version of it. And if the true pictures and the true testimonies of this war were on our television every day, there would be a, a much deeper and more agitated opposition to this war. Um, as it stands, about 4% of news coverage last year focused on Afghanistan. Now, out of that 4%, an enormous amount of that was generated by the PR efforts of the Pentagon. Another large portion is generated by embedded journalists who, in many cases, are just airdropped in for a showcase campaign like Marja, um, Operation Mushtarik there. Uh, and because of that, you only get the perspective of somebody who's traveling into an area and is only safe because of the protection of U.S. forces around them. And that is an enormously distorting effect on the reporting that comes out of those situations. So when looking at this situation, Rethink Afghanistan, we decided that one of the things we wanted to do was to get reporting done by local Afghans, um, and, and in the words of the Afghan people affected by it, out to the mainstream media, excuse me, out to the people in America in spite of the mainstream media.